Arla has opened its first innovation farm in Denmark to accelerate the development and demonstrations of new solutions for animal welfare, biodiversity and the transition to more sustainable farming. Viking Genetics is collaborating in this, helping identify and breed more climate-friendly cows with fewer emissions. But what does an Arla innovation farm do differently from other dairy farms? What opportunities will this offer to future-friendly farming? To learn what innovative dairy farming looks like and what developments are critical for a transition to be more sustainable, we are joined by an organic dairy farmer with over 25 years of experience and two innovation experts in the studio. Tatiani Bulasungwar, Agriculture Innovation Manager at Ala Foods. Torben Sonderbu, Dairy Farmer and Owner of Klingo Kologisk. And Jan Lassen, PhD, Senior Project Manager at Viking Genetics. This is the Breedcast, produced by Viking Genetics. I'm your host, Tomás de la Rosa. Hello and welcome, Tati, Torben, Jan. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks for inviting. Tati, you're originally from Brazil. You have a master's degree in ruminant nutrition and dairy and beef production, and you've worked at Arla for nearly eight years now. Yes. You and your colleagues, you work very closely with Arla's four innovation farms, including Torben's farm, Klingo Kologisk. Torben, we're delighted to have you joining us all the way from, from West, West Jutland. Thank you for coming in. Let's start by discussing Arla Innovations Farm in Denmark, which opened just a couple of months ago in April this year. What does an Arla Innovation Farm do differently from other dairy farms? Well, first of all, thank you for having us. It's a pleasure to be here and to be part of the broadcast. Um, yeah, that's a very good question. What does an innovation farm do differently than other farms. I would start by saying that the ambition with the innovation farms is actually to test uh, new concepts and solutions and develop new technologies and also share the knowledge that we have there. So a big part of what we do in the innovation farms is actually to be a place to have an open doors to guests that are visiting the farm and that are getting to know not only what we do on farm, but also what we do uh, in Ireland in general in terms of like a sustainability agenda that we have, but especially also what is happening in the industry. So it's a place where we want to bring the industry together, different partners, stakeholders, also customers, commercial teams, uh, NGOs, politicians, where we hope that we are able to share a bit more about everything that we are doing and educate them a bit more, not only on the farming that we have today, but also in the farming of the future. And uh, another big part of it, it's to be open to having innovation projects. So we really hope to have some great partnerships uh, and solutions that can help us to create the future of dairy. Jan, welcome back to the studio. Uh, Thank you. How is Viking Genetics collaborating in Alas Innovation Farm? Yeah, so first first of all, I think uh, it's important to say that, that Viking Genetics and Arla has collaborated uh, for many, many years uh, from the beginning of uh, of reproduction technologies and, and dairy uh, production. Uh, one of the main uh, drivers in our breeding goal, that is, uh, that is milk production, and, and that is uh, run by the price of milk. Uh, and when we get uh, pr- uh, improvement of, of uh, milk production, then that comes back to Arla also that they get uh, higher pr- milk production per cow and they get also better quality because we select for that. So it has the, it, the, the collaboration has run for many years, uh, specifically at the Arla Innovation Farm today. Uh, we are installing the CFIT equipment and we have uh, these uh, methane sniffers uh, installed. So that means that we both get an indirect uh, measurement of methane production through the feed intake. If we, we know that the, the biggest driver for methane production, that is uh, feed intake. So if we can get more efficient cows, everything else being equal, we should also be able to reduce uh, the climate footprint. And the climate footprint and the resource efficiency, I think these are the two, uh, two of the main things, at least uh, in the innovation farm, and something where uh, Viking Genetics and Arla uh, has exactly the same goals. And we will discuss dairy's carbon footprint, safe feed, and more later in the episode. Jan, what are some of the other technologies installed at the innovation farm? Yeah, uh, I know that uh, that there's uh, this uh, green feed uh, equipment uh, out in uh, Torben's uh, farm. Uh, Torben also has the milking robots. Uh, that is uh, one of the kind of a special technology uh, and something we can use also uh, in the in the attempt to reduce the climate footprints uh, from uh, from the milking production. 
Can you expand a little on that, Torben? What technologies have you got installed at your farm? Yeah, as uh, Jan says, we have this uh, green feed <coughs> who's trying to sniff uh, how much uh, methane the calf is bringing out. Uh, we are also beginning to install uh, equipment it was called sea feed who can measure how much uh, feed the cows is eating and then we have the robots who can measure how much milk they're giving so hopefully we'll find the most efficient uh, cows uh, for the future breeding but from the outside uh, i don't think you can see this it's a special farm but uh, when you come inside you can see some of these uh, equipment And to, just to add, th- that's also I think that's that's the one of the really really nice thing about this uh, approach. That is that that Torben's farm is not as such special as you say. <coughs> It is a commercial farm. The results we will get there will be directly transferable to the neighbor farm, uh, and I think that's uh, that's one of the the good things about this uh, the whole approach in this innovation farm. Yeah, and if I may add, I think it's it's some very good points that Torben and Ian put. Um, Because that's the goal with the innovation farms. We want to make it as a place that uh, we can share the learnings also with mm. our own farmers and uh, share best practices and, and and really be open to what works and what doesn't work. Um, and like the, the green feed project that they mentioned, which is called Metax, um, it's a project that is led by Sega's Innovation together with some other partners. Um, And it's really interesting because there we are also measuring the methane emissions uh, from housed cows with the cows that are grazing. And then afterwards try to see if there is a pattern. Um, So I think it's really interesting. And other than that, we also have a very practical um, hands-on project with silage, uh, trying to really bring a gold standard to silage management and uh, the use of silage inoculant. So trying to also reduce the feed waste on farm which impacts directly with some of our big five uh, to name feed efficiency and especially land use. So I think there is a lot there that we can do on a practical every day that hopefully can also help to improve uh, for other farmers too. And how will you share this knowledge? When I get visitors on my farm, tell them about what we are doing, what we are working with, but also the way I'm collecting a lot of data on my farm send them to the university to special people for example Jan who can try to take this data to together and and have some uh, results out uh, out of that uh, but also uh, you know have the knowledge to the advisors who is uh, you know, have the, the opportunity to go to other farms and tell them about what they can do uh, do better so a lot of uh, work with uh, collecting data Yeah, and I would also like to add from, uh, if we, we look at the farmer point of view, I think in Arla we already have also many different channels where we use to share information with our owners. And, and to name a few, we have a channel called Arla Farmers. We also have different farmer meetings, uh, but we also have some knowledge building events and lately also a podcast called More Than Milk, which if the listeners have not got the chance to listen yet, they are more than welcome to do so. Uh, Because it's through these channels that we hope to be able to share what we are doing together with our partners and the results that we are getting in these farms. And uh, just to take the chance to actually mention that here we are talking about the innovation farm, but it's not the only places where Arla has innovation projects. Throughout, I think the podcast will share a bit more, but we have other types of farms and projects going on in, in different regions as well. So it's just to mention that there is a lot going on with uh, yeah, many different partners and it's a way to bring the sector and the industry together. So together we can hopefully find the solutions we need. Incredibly exciting stuff. Torben, what does it mean to be an innovation farmer? It means that uh, what can we see, I agreed with uh, Arla that uh, they can have about 100 visits uh, every year uh, on, my far- on my farm uh, and I have to have a, an open farm. I also have to open my farm for people who want to uh, to take some tests uh, on my farm. So I think that's most of the special thing about uh, this innovation farm. So it's, it's about sharing your experience with yes. the rest of the world. Yes. And something that is very interesting, and I would say it's a very heartfelt story about your farm, is that it was your son that convinced you to apply to become an innovation farmer. How did that come about? Allah asked for a farm to yeah to be in this innovation farm, and I told my, my son about it. 
I thought it was exciting, but I thought, oh, I think there's a lot of work in that. <laughs> but my son was asking me uh, several times, uh, are we going to be this innovation farm? I said, no, I don't think so. And then he asked again and again and again, and, and then suddenly he convinced me. So we said to Allah, if you want, we would like to be uh, your innovation farm. And uh, then they came, visit us, and have a chat, uh, talk with us, uh, me and my son. And uh, yeah, then suddenly we were Allah's innovation farm. Yeah, and I would like to say that uh, together with Torben, we had 30 more farms uh, that actually applied to become the Danish innovation farm. So we visit some of them and uh, yeah, then we just decided together with a team uh, where it would be better placed. And I think as you can see today, yeah, I think Torben is our great uh, Danish innovation farmer and uh, very open-minded and open to innovation as well and ready to share his knowledge. So yeah. We've heard about what makes Arla's innovation farm so unique. Now, I'd like to focus on how Arla and its farmers are reducing dairy's carbon footprint and how genetics contributes towards this goal. That the Arla sustainability data highlights five effective climate action areas that the farmers can work on. You call these the, the big five? You've mentioned them. What are these? Yeah, they are called big five and uh, they are feed efficiency, protein efficiency, land use, fertilizer use and animal robustness. Can you expand a little? On each of them? Um, yeah. So we have seen with the climate checks that we have now performed uh, for some years that uh, these big fives are the main areas uh, that we would like to focus. So together, um, they account for 78% of the variation between Arla Farms' carbon footprint. Um, so yeah, there, there is a lot in it, as you can hear, that we, we can investigate and, and do together. Torben, how do you apply these big five to your daily work? Yeah, we at first, we, for example, about feed, feed efficient, we try to measure how much uh, we have uh, a graph, of, for example, of grass uh, outcome uh, from the fields uh, and weigh it so we know exactly how much uh, feed we have uh, stored uh, in the bunkers. Um, and then we also, when we are mixing the feed, we are again are weighing all our feed to make the perfect mix, uh, and we make also the mix uh, together with uh, our advisors. So uh, we will have the best and most efficient uh, mix for the cows. Um, we try to have focus on these big five uh, uh, topics. Uh, for example, in the past, we actually were very good at feed efficient. And then uh, when we have uh, these uh, climate check and I saw the result of all the climate checks in, in Arla, I could see, oh, suddenly we, we wasn't so efficient on uh, feed efficient. So we had lost focus. So I think a lot of these things are something about focus, to have focus on, uh, on what you're doing uh, on your farm. I think that's a very good point, mm -hmm. Torben, because when you look at the big five, there is nothing really new in it. But no. it's about having the focus, the focus on those numbers, on those specific areas, because we believe there is a lot that could be improved or made in a different way with better results. And towards looking towards these better results, where do cattle breeding and genetics fit in Allah's sustainability puzzle? So again, I would say it's linking to the big five. When we look, as I said, 78% of this variation between Arla Farms carbon footprint comes from this. Um, and uh, if you take, for instance, the feed efficiency, I think that's uh, like a big part of it. And breeding, it's actually a key lever to feed efficiency. So it goes well hand in hand together. Uh, in other words, so if we think like if we want to produce the same amount of milk, but we want the animal to eat a bit less, so less feed, less feed that is digested, it means less methane that is produced and emitted. S and, and consequently also less feed that needs to be grown. So I think it's just a win-win situation. Um, and that's what I think is really fascinating about uh, the different partnerships and that we need to work together to find uh, the best solutions. I think, I think actually if you're good on the big five, you will also have a, a good financial outcome from your farm. So I think that's two things which goes hand in hand. Yeah, definitely. Mm. 
Jen, you're a resident feed efficiency expert. Would you like to expand on, on that? Yeah, well, I think I think one of the things that that also can be mentioned here is that that I think one of the most the biggest uh, motivations you have, uh, no matter what you work with, that is uh, that is peer comparisons, right? So your colleague comparison with your colleagues, and if you can see that you're a little lower, I think that's a better motivation than uh, than uh, than than your whatever else come and tells you you're a little bit low. If your consultant come and say, "Ah, oh, you should improve uh, efficiency," then you might say, "Well." Yeah, yeah, that's okay, but but we'll stay here. But if you see that you are in the I don't know bottom half or whatever, then that's a motivation. That's a true motivation. Uh, and I think uh, with with this um, with this uh, uh, tool that uh, Arla has developed, I think that that uh, that makes a lot of, of peer comparisons with your colleagues. And I think that's uh, that's something that also drives it. And I agree. Uh, if you're good in big five, then you will also you should have a, a good economy also in your farm. Okay, and something good. I think you're about sharing uh, the knowledge yeah. uh, to each other, to my neighbor farmers and so on. I think that's a very good thing yeah. about this system. Yeah. And just to point out, I think that's what is so beautiful about data and collection of data, because we can use that data to improve what we are doing today. And I think that's one of the big parts that we want the innovation farm to be part of, uh, to really help to see how can we use this data that we have from the different areas and then put it together? And data is an important part of what we do here at Viking Genetics. Uh, cattle breeding in the Nordics were very proud of the amount of data that informs all our different indexes and all the data that we can use to, to back up what we do, including our breeding traits. Jan, what traits should a farmer who wants to breed more sustainable cows focus on? Yeah, all of them. That's <laughs> easy because you can say, given the talk we have here now, of course it's easy to say methane emission and, and feed efficiency. That's easy to say. But you can also, if a cow cannot reproduce, well, what's the, the effort then? So it's not worth anything. So you have to have a, a sustainable cow is is a cow that, that, that uh, in my mind, a cow that Torben doesn't recognize in his herd. It's a cow he never meets because she is uh, walking out there eating her feet and giving birth to a calf occasionally and, and producing a lot of milk without getting sick. So so that's that's kind of, I, I would say that we don't have any indices on our bulls that is not a sustainability index or part of the sustainability index. Uh, but of course, right now we're in a situation where, where the, the climate uh, footprint of milk production is very much in focus. So, uh, so with the feed efficiency indices and the methane indices, they are they are crucial. But again, uh, if we don't bring milk production along, then it's not worth the effort, in my opinion. Because what we should increase, the, uh, improve, that is the milk we can produce per liter of methane we uh, we release, not just releasing methane. Because then we will have this effect of uh, work just going to other countries where they will produce with a much uh, larger climate footprint than we do in Denmark. There are many big data tools to, ba uh, to back up oh, all yes, of this. Oh, yes, certainly, yes, yeah. Uh, there is so much data that is being collected on, on commercial farms. And uh, in uh, both in Denmark, Sweden and Finland, where, where Viking operates, we, we have a long tradition of collecting all kinds of data on all kinds of animals and putting into also to national databases and sharing it between the countries into... Uh, good breeding evaluation. So, so that's a long tradition we have. Among them, one of these tools might be the Safe Feed Index. Can you tell our newer listeners what the Safe Feed Index is? Yeah. So the Safe Feed Index that is uh, that is an index that says something about feed efficiency on uh, on the cows or on the bulls. So, uh, so it's um, it's combined of two indices: one on uh, metabolic efficiency. So that is how good is a cow to transfer the feed she eats into products, so such as uh, milk, of course, but also into uh, to fetus, but also into uh, to slaughter weight. And then uh, the other part, that is the maintenance index. So that's a little bit like Torben and, and me. If uh, I need much more to eat to maintain my body than Torben needs because he is much more slim than I am. Uh, so the maintenance index is something that says something about how much should you eat in order to maintain the body weight you have? And there we, we can say that uh, we get we get credit to the smaller cow, so that we want in the future a cow that is uh, a little bit smaller, uh, so that she works better in the future than the big cow does. Thank you.
And for those out there interested in learning more about the Safe Feed Index and feed efficiency, we have two other Breedcast episodes on the subject, which I encourage you to dive into. And our listeners out there can also have a more profitable feed-efficient dairy herd with world-class Nordic genetics. To discover what Viking genetics breeding bulls are available, please visit vikinggenetics.com and browse a Holstein, Red and Jersey Bulls selection. We've spoken about farmers' efforts to reduce uh, carbon emissions. Now, let's discuss the role that technology has and how it can contribute towards uh, towards this by helping farmers breed more sustainable and feed-efficient cows. One of the technologies being used at Arla Innovation Farm here in Denmark are state-of-the-art methane sniffers installed at the milking robot measuring the cow's individual's emissions. Jan, what role do methane sniffers play? Yeah, so... so uh they are kind of the the backbone in the methane index we are working on uh, to uh, to make available uh, for the farmers that choose to use uh, Viking genetics bulls. Um, that is a direct measurement of methane emission that uh, is made individual on the cows that uh, is getting milked in the milking robot. So every time a cow gets into the milking robot, we have this a machine that sucks a little bit of air uh, from the the feeding trough that is in the milking robot. And then from each visit, we make a registration out of the data that comes out there. We make a measurement every second during a milking. And Tom, I guess your cows, they get milked six to 12 minutes or something like that per milking. So we get we get measurements throughout that uh, whole milking. And then we, we, uh, we transfer these uh, registrations from all the milkings into a daily production of uh, methane from each cow. And, and then you can do all kinds of things with that data. Uh, what we probably will end up with is a, a weekly uh, methane phenotype uh, that says uh, this cow here has produced so many uh, grams of methane in this week. Uh, so uh, she is higher or lower than the average. And that kind of data, that is then what we will put into a uh, a model that then will give the, the if we have uh, 15 offspring of one bull, then uh, that bull uh, will get a breeding value based on those animals and whatever uh, uh, offspring that is related to this bull uh, will produce. So eventually it'll end up with a, with a breeding value for methane based on direct measurements. Tati, can you tell me about the, the value that Arla sees in this sniffers? I think it's of great value, um, as Yen pointed out so well. Um, I think the amount of data that we can get and the accuracy of the data because of the, um, the number of individual cows that are being measured on the everyday is just great. Um, so we are just very happy to be part of this project and very happy to have it at the Innovation Farm because, again, thinking about sharing the learnings and educating people on what we are doing. I think it's a big part of it that people see for themselves and they can understand a bit more about what together we we are trying to achieve. And also the, the sniffers are not just, I presented as it was merely for, for genetic evaluation. That is not the case. This data will actually be available for uh, hopefully improving uh, the already good uh, um, uh, climate footprint uh, index that is in in uh, in Arla, uh, but also uh, hopefully uh, to improve uh, the Danish uh, reporting for IPCC. So uh, right now the IPCC rep- rep- reporting uh, is based on the data from uh, really good high quality data from the research facility in Folum. Uh, but uh, in the future, if we have uh, hundredfold as many cows with data from commercial farms. We should be able to do something that is uh, equally good uh, to that, and and hopefully also better. Uh, so so that's uh, that's another part of it. Yeah, definitely. I see us. We are definitely contributing to the industry. Mm. So yeah. yeah, it's great to be part of it. And as we previously discussed, feed efficiency is one of the focus areas for Arla and its farmers. What technologies are available to monitor feed efficiency? Yeah, so right now, uh, you you have uh, if you want to measure it on an individual level, uh, there are very few options. There are some uh, scale-based measures, uh, me- measurement uh, techniques that is called uh, Incentic uh, and uh, GrowSafe, and also one that's called BioControl. They are mainly, not 100%, but mainly uh, uh, installed in research facilities, uh, as we know around the world, uh, and, and they provide uh, good data, but they are also rather expensive. And 
and not very easy to work with in commercial settings as uh, in Torben's farm. Uh, some of them need to be uh, emptied with the vacuum cleaner and so on. I don't know if Torben would be interested in, in emptying 60 uh, bins uh, with the vacuum cleaner every day uh, and so on. And, and so we have uh, worked a lot here in Viking Genetics with this uh, camera-based, uh, 3D camera-based uh, equipment called CFIT, uh, where we put cameras in the ceiling of the farm And then we can uh, use that to quantify how much uh, each individual cow eats uh, in a day. And that is uh, getting installed at uh, Torben's farm and, and getting to work so that, again, this data should be... If to again, if Torben cannot use this data for management, it's difficult to use it for breeding value estimation also. And that data should also be made available to, to make improvement of uh, the, the climate assessment tool in, in Arla. Torben, what excites you most about Cefit? Oh, what excites you? A lot of cameras <laughs> to film me. No, um, I think, yeah, the way we hopefully can measure how much feed the cows are eating uh, individual uh, so we can find, again, the best cow for the future to, to breed on. Uh, I think that that's very exciting. Uh, and I think it's uh, incredible they can do it, actually. And also uh, about the weight of the cow because I really want to know in the start of aerial lactation how much weight a cow is losing and when will it then be the best time to inseminate it again for for the next lactation. So I hope I'll get the data for management uh, on how I will uh, do it in the future. Tati, you mentioned that Ala has a, has a few other types of farms out there. What are uh, what are other innovative farming developments and technologies that excite you? That's uh, another good question. I think uh, technology and innovation in general is very exciting. So I'm I get really excited to see everything that is out there and the new solutions that we have today. But um, I would also like to start by saying that I think to in order to achieve uh, to be carbon neutral by 2050, which is our goal, we need solutions that are still in development now and most likely we will end up using some of the innovations that don't even exist yet. So I think it's just really important to be open uh, for innovation and different ways of doing things so we can get better. Um, but as I mentioned before, in Arla we have the innovation farms and uh, just to point out, uh, Torben is our Danish innovation farm, but we also have three others uh, which together we are building a network and the other three, one is in the UK, one in Sweden, and we just signed a contract with another one in Germany, which will be launched in August this year. Um, and, and then we really hope to be sharing best practices and uh, ways of working and yeah, be complementing each other because farming is complex and uh, it's also different. So if we see like Torben is organic and then the other three, they are conventional, But one of them, uh, our Swedish farmer, he's also part of our regenerative pilot program. So there are so many management systems and different ways of doing things. Uh, and I think it's just important to be open for innovation and solutions in the different types that we have. Um, and just to finalize, apart from that, uh, of the Innovation Farm Network, we also have what we call uh, pilot farms and also R&D farms which are other types of farms that are testing uh, different types of, of things and have projects, but they are more project-based. So whenever we need something for a specific project, like for instance, to test the Bovea that we have at the moment, then we go out there and then we recruit farms specifically for that. And I think the main difference with the innovation farm is that it's something more permanent and that is, as I mentioned in the beginning, ready to open doors and receive guests so we can also share a bit more of what we are doing. Jan, are there any specific uh, new technologies that <laughs> excite you? Oh, many, many, many. Uh, I would also say, so you can easily get enough data, but you can never get enough good data. And I think that's uh, just because there is a new gadget that provides a lot of data, it's not necessarily good. Uh, so, so we have to be, and I think that's, That's also, I, I don't think that Arla expects that all technology that will be tested in the innovation farm will work okay. uh, and be for the better. But if we, if we can say, if we, I think someone said that if you have control of everything, then you're not moving. 
Ja. So, so we kind of have to also let go of the control sometime and then test something that 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 perhaps uh, is too crazy, uh, but but it might also be there that we find uh, the real uh, the real diamond. Yeah, and I totally agree mm. with you. And I think that that's what happens when you think of research. Some things will work and some things won't. Um, for instance, I can say one area that is really close to my heart, and I know it's also very close to Torben's, is biodiversity. And we are very excited to also see what is out there that could help us to collect some data and then afterwards how to use this data, how to, how to read that and become better at something. So not only keeping like the nature that we have around us, but how can we also make it better and improve things? To conclude, Torben, what would you say to farmers who are looking to take steps towards more future-friendly farming? I think the demand of milk is increasing. So we need to find a way producing feed in a sustainable way. Um, and I think, as we said before, if you are more sustainable, you're more efficient. And again, it's financial good for me as a farmer. And then I think we have a good model uh, in Arlo with the incentive model who helps me to find the way uh, and help me also to find the, the good way uh, to be yeah, a more efficient and then again more sustainable. Uh, and it actually compensates me uh, on different things if I have to invest in, in something. So I think we have found a very good uh, model uh, for the farmers here. So um, I look uh, as a for a bright future uh, to be a dairy farmer. And uh, if I may just add, um, I think another very good point, uh, just to add to what Torben said, is that the customer and the consumer demand is also out there, uh, and not to mention in some countries also the legislation of becoming more sustainable and being better at what we are doing. So I think it's just a natural path uh, that, yeah, we, we need to look towards the future and think long term as well. And, and that's what we are trying to do here. And I think we, we have to move as a, a dairy because, yes, we are we are producing a lot of uh, methane. So we have to be more efficient and, uh, and be better uh, in the future. So we have a, a little pressure on us. But I think uh, if we are doing it right, I think we have a bright future. Thanks for joining us on the Breedcast today. We've discussed Arla's new innovation farm in Denmark, how Arla and its farmer owners are taking steps towards more future-friendly farming, and the tools to help farmers breed healthy, efficient cows that emit less methane. If you want to learn more about Viking genetics, our dairy and beef breeds, get tips and tricks for breeding and management, and much more, please visit our website, vikinggenetics.com. Huge thanks to Tatiani Sumwa, Torben Sonderbu, and Jan Lesson for sharing their insights. A shout out to you all listening out there. If you have an idea for a topic in the world of cattle breeding you would like us to focus on, please visit breedcast.com or message us on the Viking Genetics Facebook page. I'm your host, Tomás de la Rosa. Please join me for the next Breedcast episode, where we will have a look at the Viking Jersey breed and why it has become a popular choice among farmers moving away from Holstein cows and switching breeds.